In this module, we're going to look at the time value of money. This is a very important concept. This is the fundamental building block of all finance. So with the materials that you learn in this module will be used over and over again in the rest of this course, as well as all future finance courses. So the first tool that I'm going to introduce in understanding the time value of money is a timeline. Um, put it very simply, it's just a way for a shorthand for us to put all the relevant and important information onto a simple structure. So a timeline, as it indicated, has to do with time. So this is we call these refer to these as period zero, one, two, three, and so forth. Um, underneath it, we'll write out the cash flow. So this is the amount. It can be $100, $1,000 for each time period. And we also include the interest rate. One thing that we want to talk about period in uh, doing time value of money, period is very, very important. Period is just the frequency. And you can, so your cash flow can occur on an annual basis. So those will be your annual cash flows. Think about uh, tax refund. You get tax refund every April 15. So that's happened only once a year. Um, other cash flow, the most common example are uh, stock dividends. They occur on a quarterly basis. Um, many, many consumer uh, loans and finances occur on a monthly basis. You pay your rent each month, your car loan each month, your utility each month. So monthly compounding or monthly frequency is the most common. Daily uh, frequency or getting cash flow on a daily basis is less frequent for consumer, but very common for businesses. So if you are working for a business or you're doing the finances for a business, you will see daily um, cash flow as a as a common denominator uh, when we are writing down the cash flow we use a positive sign to indicate inflow so that's money coming to you a negative sign to indicate outflow um, and th these occur at the end of each period and that can be important so for example um, let's say period one the end of year one uh, is the same as the beginning of year two. So if you get, say you get $10,000 here, you get $10,000 at the end of year one, that's December 31st, not January 1st of year one. And interest rate, just want to put a, put a note in here. In finance, we think of interest rate as the rate of exchange between today's money and tomorrow's money. And there are many other names that you will encounter throughout this course. And whenever you see the term, discount rate, cost of capital, opportunity cost, required return, rate of return, interest rate, all of these names refer to, uh, will be used in the place of interest rate. Uh, it is okay if these names do not make too much sense to you at this point, you encounter them throughout the course. Um, just remember that when you um, see in future chapters, they will refer to required return or rate of return, that is the, that takes the same place as interest rate when we compute the time value of money. So let's take a look at how we apply this. The first concept we're going to take a look at is future value. Future value is the amount of money that will occur later on in time. So this is the value that will happen um, later on in the time and the timeline. Uh, it represents the ending value of an investment. In, chapter, in this chapter, we are going to look first at the example of a lump sum. Lump sum means that the cash flow occurs only one single time. So the timeline for such an, uh, a problem will look something like this. Let's say you have an interest rate of 5%. And so in this particular example, we'll have cash flow, let's say $1,000. And we may ask, how much would this $1,000 grow to in the future? So let's take an application. So in here, we say, let's say you, you invest $1,000 for one year at 5% per year. What is the future value in one year? So if you invest $1,000 and you earn 5%, so 5% is 0 0.05, that means you get $50 in interest.
Now, with the $50 in interest and the original $1,000, altogether at the end of one year, you have a total of $1,050. Now, we call the $1,000 that we start off with, we call that our principal. And the $50 we earn is, of course, our interest. Now, let's say instead of just saving your money for one year, you decided to leave the money in the bank for another year. Now, how much money would you have two years from now? So in year two, we're gonna start with, instead of $1,000, we now have $1,050. So our interest is $1,050. Again, we are earning 5%, so times 5%. That gives us an interest of $52.50. So with the $52.50 in interest and a starting value of $1,050, our new future value is $1,102.50. So we have the $1,050 plus the new interest of $52.50. So if you invest $1,000 for two years, you have $1,102.50. So we can continue this for two years, three years, four years, but it can get tedious. So in finance, we actually encourage people to be lazy, to be lazy and efficient. So we figure out, well, maybe we can find a shortcut. So I'm gonna introduce the shortcut now. The shortcut is that we know that we, if we start with present value, so $1,000, you grow by the interest rate. So this is a rate of increase for the time period. This is, so this is a compounding formula. So when you are earning interest on interest, the process is called compounding. So we can apply this formula to what we have just um, seen. If we have, if you invest in one year, so this is a, some, I also want to introduce some notation that we frequently use. So FV is a short, is the abbreviation for future value. And because oftentimes we invest with, in multiple investment horizon, we use a number to denote how much we are investing, how long, I'm sorry, how long we are investing for. So in here, we, we are investing the money for one year. So we are compounding interest only once. So the 5% is, is raised to the power of one, and our ending value after investing one year is $1,050. Um, if we invest for two years, our ending value after two years is $1,102.50. So I mentioned that when we earn interest on interest, which is what happened in this case, we call that compounding. Um, this is in contrast to some very specific cases of loans where you do not earn compounding. When you don't earn compounding, we, we call that simple interest. Simple interest is a case where interest is not reinvested. So you get your $50 in the first year, you spend the $50 and you start anew with $1,000 every single year. So that would be the case of a simple interest. So if you have $1,000 and you invest for two years at 5%, simple interest means that you get 5% on $1,000 every single year because you're spending the interest and so reinvesting it. Uh, in that case, your total interest for the two years will be $100 and the future value will be $1,100. So simple interest is really simple. What we want to do is introduce the concept of simple interest to help us better understand the impact or the effects of compounding. So if you think about reinvesting your interest, we knew that if we reinvest our interest, the $1,000 over two years would have grown to $1,102.50. Now, if you don't remember this at this point, pause this video and uh, you can rewind it um, and, and take a look at the prior uh, few examples. You can also download the um, PowerPoint so that you can um, flip back and, and review the concept um, a few uh, slides ago. So 
We know that our future value at the end of two years is $102.50. We start with $1,000. So that tells us that our total interest, since we end up with $1,102.50 when we were starting with $1,000. So we earn a total of $102.50 in interest. So what is our compound interest? Well, we know that we, learn, we earn a total of $102.50. With simple interest, simple interest is only $100. So the difference between the two must be due to compounding, and we call that compound interest. So compound interest is the total interest minus the simple interest. We have $102.50, simple interest is $100, so our compound interest is $2.50. And this $2.50 actually comes from interest that you earn on future interest payments. So we earn 5% 5, 5 on $50, and we end up with a compound interest of $2.50 in this case. This approach, this general approach, can be used to analyze compound interest and the effect of compounding, not just for two years, but for multiple years. Now let's take a look at another example of future value. Let's say you invest $1,000 for five years at 5% per year. Question is, how much would, your, would you have at the end of year five assuming you earn annual compounding. So we know we are looking for how much we will have in the future, so we are computing future value. I would suggest that you pause the video at this point and try to work out the answer, and you can check the solution with me in just one minute. So go ahead and pause your video. All right, welcome back. So let's solve this problem. We have $1,000. So, and we are asked to find our future value. So we have $1,000. We know that we'll be earning 5%. So one plus 5%. And we will invest this for five years. And if you use your calculator, that turns out to be $1,276.28. Is that the answer you get? I hope so. Okay. Now, what is the simple interest per year on this problem? So again, you can pause the video and work out the answer. But that's relatively straightforward. The simple interest is 5% at $5, at five, I'm sorry, 5% 5 for $100, so that is $50 per year. And you invested this for five years, so if you multiply that over five, that means we have a total of $250 over five years. So how much is the compound interest? Well, we have a total interest of, we start with $1,000 and we end up with $1,276.28. So that means that our total interest must be $276.28 because we started with $1,000 when we end up with $1,276.28. So if we have $276.28 as total interest and our simple interest is $250, the additional $26.28 must be compound interest.
Okay, we'll stop here for this video. In the next video, we'll introduce the financial calculator. So be sure you have your, calcula your financial calculator with you before you start on the next video.